The reason we're doing the art study is because we do not know, in all honesty, whether there is any benefit or there is not any benefit. Dr. Sears is the director of the chest and allergy unit at St. Joseph's Hospital in Hamilton, Ontario, where currently they are conducting a randomized placebo-controlled study to show the effects of chiropractic care on children with asthma. Many people use chiropractors for asthma because they feel that there is benefit. And many chiropractors have seen people with asthma improving over a period of time. Uh, and uh, many doctors would say that's purely the natural history of improvement and we don't have evidence. I would recommend chiropractic to anybody who suffers from anything because I do believe that it would be able to help them. Now, as a belief system, that's one thing. But as a scientific fact, it's quite different. And unfortunately, when the chiropractor steps into the arena of science or into the arena of OHIP payment, uh, then there has to be some measure of validity, and there is none as yet. But indeed, it's been shown clearly that on x-ray, at least, you can't see the subluxation the chiropractor corrects. Medicare requires an x-ray to be performed uh, for any procedures performed by a chiropractor. Literally millions of x-rays are turned in every year by chiropractors because they must substantiate the level and type of subluxation with those x-rays. The comparative x-ray demonstrates a significant correction in spinal alignment. When we look at the spine now, it's almost perfectly aligned with the center gravitation line, and this is because the subluxations we noticed on the first x-ray have been effectively corrected through adjustment. There is no evidence, with very few exceptions, that x-ray is of any value in diagnosing mechanical back pain. The fact is that x-ray is a very appropriate, obviously, intervention uh, to determine what the diagnostic issues are. The chiropractor has more training in undergraduate than any regular medical doctor or osteopath. There is specialty residency training for diplomate board certification in radiology and chiropractic, just like in the medical field. I think the medical profession is confused with the use of x-ray by a chiropractor. There is a growing trend in chiropractors adjusting children, and reports suggest it is safe and effective. Yet many medical doctors, especially pediatricians, question the value of chiropractic care for children. Dr. Murray Katz, the director of the Tiny Tots Medical Center in Montreal, is perhaps the most notorious media critic. I've been interested in the question of uh, chiropractic, especially in regards to the treatment or claims for the treatment of children. The whole issue about whether chiropractors can or cannot uh, adjust or manipulate children is a non-issue, and it was to a great extent generated by uh, uh, Murray Katz, who has been a long-term antagonist of the chiropractic profession. It's not based upon any science. There, there is not even any mention of harm that it does. It's just a, it's a philosophical difference that he has with the profession. Dr. Katz has been embroiled in litigation, political battles, as well as media campaigns against chiropractic for decades. Recently, he organized a group called the Orthopractic Society. I am also part of a group called the Orthopractic Society, which combines groups of chiropractors, physical therapists, and physicians who believe that manipulation therapy is a valuable therapy but only in treating specific musculoskeletal conditions and not in treating organic disorders like heart disease, high blood pressure, conditions in children such as ear infections, bedwetting, colic, and so on. But that's not the purpose of orthopractic. Its sole objective is to demolish chiropractic. They don't have credentialing, they don't have standards, they don't have much code of ethics, they're not professionally recognized. There's no qualifications you need. So there really is no such thing as an orthopraxic society. The society, in fact, is, is fading away. Organized medicine's leadership has tried to attack chiropractic from every vantage point and has failed miserably.
decade after decade. Recently, uh, the American Medical Association was finally sued for the conspiracy that was proved of organized medicine to try to destroy chiropractic. And what they were doing essentially was uh, the medical association was uh, restricting doctors from referring to chiropractors or having anything to do with them and that was fortunately uh, uh, won by the chiropractors and I think that opened the doors uh, to areas where chiropractors weren't allowed before. Now the leadership of organized medicine is left with its next attempt or conspiracy and it's a dangerous one to scare the mothers of the world and that if you take your child to a chiropractor the child will be at risk harmed or deformed. The first subluxation most likely occurs during birth. Birth is a traumatic moment. It is therefore recommended that children be checked immediately after birth. Once again, there is no evidence that adjusting a child has any benefit. Uh, it has been said that it would cure such things as colic or, or ear infection. It really amazes me that the medical profession and so on say there has never been any research to prove that chiropractic actually works to help in, in the treatment of a colicky baby, where in fact it does. An interdisciplinary study from Denmark reported a 94% success rate with chiropractic management of infantile colic, indicating something more than natural remission and placebo. A randomized controlled trial is now being conducted to verify these results. I don't need to go beyond these four walls though to, to find out the benefits of, of chiropractic care with a colicky baby. We have looked after so many babies in this office with so many positive results and not results that take three months to develop either. Results that virtually can happen overnight. I couldn't believe that this child had colic because it was 18 out of 24 hours at least that she would be crying. So I approached my family doctor and I told him about the article and everything and he told me I was crazy to even think about taking a six-week-old child to a chiropractor. We talk about chiropractic and colic, why these people believe, because it's all a planned testimonial. And she just did a little tiny adjustment, turned her head one side into the other, and it was all done. At, that was the first, it, Kirsten was six weeks old at that time, the first time I went, and that was the first smile, and that, this is the truth, the first smile that I'd seen off her face. She was crying when she was lying there. Dr. Goldhock did the adjustment and honestly she stopped crying. Going to someone who calms them both down, whether it's through talking or, or physical contact, may be a good thing. But in a very medical sense, that isn't a cure. Despite the concerns of some medical doctors, many parents take their children to chiropractors and believe in the results. I've started bringing my children after I spoke to a mother who was also bringing her kids because my girls had had a number of ear infections. I guess by the fourth ear infection I was really getting concerned because particularly for Danielle they kept putting on her higher, higher levels of penicillin and um, there was a lot of bad reaction to that. There was some vomiting, there was just feeling really lethargic, weary. You could just tell the medicine was really hard on them and we have had a cold since we've been coming but we managed to avoid the ear infections children that present with repeated ear infections, they usually have um, a history of repeated antibiotic use, a lot of antibiotic use. You may even want to call it antibiotic abuse. They have been on antibiotics uh, over and over and over again uh, for the treatment of these ear infections. And what happens is antibiotic use suppresses natural immunity. So these children develop a suppressed immune system. So the more antibiotics, the more suppressed immune system, the more suppressed immune system they use it is for these infections to keep reoccurring all the time. So there is some benefit in the use of antibiotics and there is some problem with their overuse. If I had to err on the side of caution, I would probably overuse the antibiotic than underuse the antibiotic. When there's a subluxation present between atlas and axis, which is the highest two vertebrae, we find often when this subluxation is adjusted that the ears tend to drain properly. And when the ears drain properly, there's not a pooling of fluid that allows for this infection to occur in the first place. I started to bring my younger son in because he had recurring ear infections. In a matter of three months, he